Okay, this is my quick review of the Netgear D7000 um, modem router. This particular version is version 2, it's also known as the, um, as the UK version, it's somewhere on the back here, or on the side, underneath actually. Yes, it's the D7000-200UKS version. So this particular version presumably has some software or hardware alterations for UK broadband providers. So I brought, bought this particular uh, router for £130 from Amazon. It usually retails between £125 and £150 depending on you know the time of the month or whatever. But I got this for £130. I bought it to replace this tiny little PlusNet router which is pretty poor as you can imagine. It kind of struggles with multiple connections and you know it's, it's alright speed wise and everything but it's um is pretty poor when dealing with multiple connections. So I bought it to replace this. So as you can see, it's a pretty nice looking router. It's probably the nicest router I've kind of owned or even seen. So it's got this nice sloped front design. It comes with these three large antennas which you can point around in different directions. All different directions. So so it's a pretty nice looking router as you can see, just tighten that up. So the actual router itself is quite it's quite a quite a size. I, I wouldn't say it's massive. I've, I've seen some reviews saying it's quite a big router, but it's not as big as as you might think. So it comes with two USB ports, one of them is USB 2.0 and the other one is um, 3.0. So you can connect a, a USB stick such as this into them or you can connect a um, USB hard drive. Personally I probably would prefer the, the if the ports were on the back as the USB stick looks all right or looks okay in the side but if you perhaps had a, a USB hard drive with a cable it would look a little bit messy in my opinion. So it comes with all these lights which are unbelievably bright. So it comes with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 13 different lights, so that one's the Wi-Fi indicator and that one's the, to um, link it up to your printers and stuff and your other devices. You can go within the menu and disable all the lights except the power indication light and the USB indication light so you can switch most of these off apart from the power and USB so that's not a major issue. You can also perhaps stick some tape along them but I do find because there's a vent on the front here the light comes through the vents as well so probably not a great router for your bedroom if you're trying to sleep. So actually the router itself inside, as you can see inside there, is pretty um, empty inside. It's just basically a circuit board with all the chips attached, which is quite close to the top of the router. So most of the router is pretty empty, so don't be fooled by the size of it. It's not actually a lot inside. I presume most of that's for the actual cooling. You can see there's, there's a vent on the bottom as well, and a vent all the way around the back, and the back as well. So on the back we have we have the DSL connection here for your for your telephone line. You have um, the Ethernet ports here, all the LAN ports. You have the power button, a reset button here, and the um, power cable button here. So you don't get much in the box. You get an Ethernet cable, a cable for the DSL line, and um, obviously the power supply. So this works with. All, if not most, all, most of not all um, UK internet providers. It supports ADSL and VDSL, so it supports fiber optic. But I, I think it only supports fiber to the uh, to the to the cabinet, not to the premises. So just double check on that. If you have a fiber cable coming all the way to your home, it may not work. So this is basically for phone line connections, as it says in the box. You can see here it says it says here for. Um, for phone line connections from BT Talk Talk Plus Net and more, for BT Infinity Talk Talk Fiber Plus Net Fiber and more. So it covers most um, UK ISPs. So my first impressions compared to this one. So one of the main reasons I was updating is obviously that this couldn't handle you know simultaneous connections within the home. I got you know three smart televisions, three smartphones, 
Chromecast, um, PlayStation 4 and so on, and it, it just couldn't hack them all. So, so one of the reasons I, I was hoping to get a better Wi-Fi range, but believe it or not, this router has poor Wi-Fi range. Despite having three fairly large antennas, I'm probably only getting roughly certainly outside my back garden, perhaps another extra five feet, ten feet at best. So this little plus net box, which probably cost twenty pounds at best, is probably producing you know a very similar Wi-Fi range to this you know 130 pound Netgear router. So if you're after a router which is going to give you you know a, a very big footprint in terms of signal this isn't a great router so I, was, I am disappointed with this router that it doesn't you know extend further it will depend on your home like I'm saying inside the home is fine outside in the back garden it's no better than the plus net router you know perhaps only five or ten feet better so so if you're, if you're buying a router for extended range this this isn't great so you know just despite all these antennas it, it gives actually quite poor Wi-Fi range Saying that, it does give a better consistent speed, so if you've perhaps sat in the furthest in your dining room, far away from the route, it gives a kind of solid, say, you know, 10 megabytes per second, depending on your, on your actual speed of your phone. So it's a pretty consistent speed, but it is poor Wi-Fi range, certainly outside of the house. No better than what you, you get with your, with your um, internet service provider. So, so setting it up, I will show you the interface later on in another video or an extra video to this. I'll show you kind of this, the menu system. So this does 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz bands. Um, 5 gigahertz, again, is quite a weak signal. You don't get as far as range with 5 gigahertz. So if you're perhaps looking for a 5 gig um, um, router, the 5 gig works fine within the home, but again, it's very limited outside. I can hardly get a signal outside with 5, with five gigahertz. So if you are buying it for that purpose, again, it's not great for that purpose. So setting it up is pretty simple. You, you will need to know your uh, your username and your password for your, your your ISP. You can usually find this in your email when you first signed up your ISP. So you will need to enter those details. The rest of it's pretty much automatic. So 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 far performance is kind of kind of a bit touchy. The interface, as I showed you, as I will show you later on, can crash or it can be a bit a little bit buggy. You go to change certain settings, and you know sometimes the router just kind of freezes on you, and or goes through a kind of um, a reset process or reload process, and it kind of takes a long time. You go and just change a little thing, and you know it takes forever to kind of get back online. I've also found that you know my internet connection isn't perfect by any means. It does often disconnect, even with this router. It often disconnects at least once a week, and you just you just have to turn the router on and off to get it back on again. Sometimes I have disconnections every single day, so perhaps there's a little bit dodgy wiring within my um, within my home. I don't know, but with this, I find once it does disconnect from the internet, it can be a nightmare to get back on. I have read other reviews on Amazon that they kind of say, especially with PlusNet, I don't know whether it's a PlusNet problem or whether it's all ISPs, whether it's Sky, whether it's TalkTalk Talk and BT as well. I don't know, but they have kind of reported disconnection problems, and it can be quite difficult to get back online. What I find is you have to turn the router up for say, at least 10 or 15 minutes and then turn it back on and then, then it kind of reconnects eventually but it is a little bit kind of you know temperamental from that point of view so if you do have a, a little bit of a dodgy internet connection which disconnects quite regularly I would personally avoid this router as it kind of kind of kind of throws a hissy fit every time it disconnects and it kind of takes forever to get back online. I, you know I have many times plugged this back in just to get back online. You know, I've tried updating the software, I've tried lots of different settings, read many different forums, and they kind of lots of people are reporting the same kind of problem. So whether there's a problem with people's connections or a certain um, internet provider, I don't know, but just bear in mind this kind of router can be a little bit touchy. So that's kind of a downside from it. Beside that, it kind of gives a solid internet performance when it does work. I have tried online gaming. Personally, I haven't noticed much if any of a difference you know in terms of lag it's kind of enough for the same as kind of this you know what this provides it's probably a little little bit better but you know you will not notice much difference so so overall it's not it's not a great router but it's not a bad route either when it does work it's pretty solid it gives a pretty solid connection within the house like i said the wi-fi range 
you know, it's pretty poor, but you know, that, that's you know, unless you, you, know, you go and spend you know two, three hundred pound on one of these tri brand routers, I don't think you're going to get a great range anyway on most of these. So, so the next step I'm going to show you is the interface, which you kind of log in and set up, and just kind of show you what kind of features it has. So, I'll show you the next video in a moment. Okay, so here's a quick look at the interface of the Netgear D7000 version 2 router. So I'm not connected at the moment, but just give you a brief idea what it looks like. So it's a basic kind of interface. Like I said, when you first set it up, you will get a welcome screen and you get the chance to enter your details and so on set up. You can also do it from the advanced tab and just click on setup wizard and so on. So just look at the basic things. So you get the internet, you get two different bands. Just click on that. So you've got the 2.4 and the 2.5 bands you can see here. So you, you can either connect to either one. Just choose Netgear 66 or give it a different name if you want. You can also change the um, Wi-Fi password here as I already have done. And again, you can just choose Netgear 5G and connect to that and so on. So it's a pretty um, basic interface. It does have a ready share. Um, so you can stick USB stick in and you can add movies or pictures and you can view them on your smart TV. That, that for me personally does work very well. It seems to play most video files, if not all video files, you know, you know except for maybe one or two. Um, it will depend on your smart television, of course, how well they play. But, you know, so if you do upload things to your USB stick or USB hard drive, they do kind of play on your smart TV fairly well. A lot better than other routers I've had in the past. You can also set up guest network, which is just basically you create uh, another name for your, so you can see it's called Netgear Guest. So you can just call it, you know, Guest for your hotel or your your bed and breakfast and so on. Or just if you want to allow friends within your home to use it. It's nothing special, it's just a different kind of um, name which you connect to and, and set up a password or dis um, disable a password and so on. So yeah, so basically the interface is pretty simple. There's no kind of major kind of advanced settings which you can kind of go through. It's all pretty, you know, basic. So you can just change your Wi-Fi passwords and all that, and change the um, um, the login details and stuff like that. It's a, there's no major kind of complicated details within the actual interface. So, so yeah, pretty much that is it. It's not huge amount to show in this. Again, you can just set up your USB drive and all that through that. It's also parent controls. I haven't personally used that yet. Whether it's any good or not, I don't. I don't know. But you know, again. You can try it. You can also download an app for your smartphone, for your Android or Apple smartphone. That again is pretty basic. It doesn't allow you to do too much about it except for change your kind of password and stuff like that. And it just kind of detects your um, Wi-Fi signal and all that. It's nothing, nothing special. So that's the kind of interface. It's nothing special. I have had um, TP-Link routers and there's a lot more complicated, a lot more features you can change. This particular one is pretty simple. You can see here you can choose different um, um, ISP providers, BT, EE, JT, Plusnet, Sky, Vodafone, TalkTalk, Talk, Virgin Media and so on. So it supports a lot of different ones. Like I did say before earlier in the video, the router can be a little bit temperamental when it disconnects from the internet. So if you have got a slightly dodgy connection, I personally wouldn't buy this router. But if you have got a solid connection, you know, it, it is a decent router. But for me personally, it kind of disconnects far too often. Perhaps it's an issue with Plusnet, or perhaps it's an issue with my wiring. I don't know, but overall, I personally wouldn't buy this modem again, but or this router again. But when it does work, it's it's fairly decent. It's not spectacular. It, it hasn't got great Wi-Fi range, but you know it is better than what you get with your internet service provider. So that's that's my video for now. Thanks for watching.